Go ahead. Stand right okay. here, and I'll let the final bind will part. Hello. Hello. out there to meet all of the rest. Has anyone told you how you were picked uh, or why uh, you were in here for a little advance? Well, it was because for some of you it was letters and wires, and for others of you it was that our people uh, were watching and monitoring television and uh, 
some of the things that you said <laughs> when you got off the plane, when you arrived home. Uh, I wish we could have had the opportunity to do it all of them, but time won't permit that, but we'll all go over there. And present also, if you haven't been told, will be 40 in uniform who, 10 each from the four services that uh, participated in the, in the uh, Grenada Rescue Mission. <laughs> General Vesey, Chief of Staff. <laughs> Just remember, troops, when you get that medical degree, we need some good doctors in the Army. Yes, sir. I think you'd all like to know that they only had about 48 hours, top secrecy, to plan a maneuver of that size. And I remember how warm my heart was when we sat there in the Situation Room and the General was up with Pointer at the map and his first line was to minimize, if not, if we can't eliminate totally casualties. And then pointed to the first priorities, which happened to be two campuses of St. George's University and the necessity of immediately securing those, uh, the minimum of risk uh, to all concerned. And uh, I'm so proud of all of them in uniform and for what they did, and so proud of all of you and uh, the way you have responded. And just. And what you said to all the people. Really. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a great, I think it's been a. Uh, I'm not supposed to be talking here. But <laughs> <laughs> You've just finished cleaning up my desk. <laughs> but I think it's been a great boost to the American people and a real shot of patriotism. And I think it's wonderful, and I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. of the United States and Mrs. Reagan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please. Look at that. Look at this. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Please be seated. Well, Secretary Weinberger, General Vesey, and all of you students and all of the men and women who are here in uniform. I'm so glad to meet you and to be able to say it officially, welcome home. I, I can't tell you when I've been so happy and I might add relieved to have such guests here on the South Lawn. So a very warm and grateful welcome to you all and welcome to the ambassadors and other special guests who are here. And let me tell you how this little get together came about. I'm actually playing matchmaker today. You students sent me so many moving telegrams of appreciation about the military fellows who rescued you. I thought it might be nice if you had the chance to tell them yourselves. So here in this more peaceful setting are representatives of all the four units that participated and were there with you on Grenada. In letter after letter, you spoke of your deep respect 
for those who risked their lives and in some circumstances gave their lives so that you'd be safe. A great many of you said you believed you'd be dead or held hostage today if it weren't for the courageous men whose business it is to be courageous, our soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen. I wish I could give every military person who participated in the Grenada Rescue copies of your telegrams and, and letters. Some of you also wrote of your anger that certain people belittled the danger that you were in. And I must say, this angered me a little too. It's very easy for some snug know-it-all in a plush protected quarter to say that you were in no danger. I have wondered how many of them would have changed places with you. <laughs> Some of our fellows didn't make it back. Ted and Jan Stathos wrote me a letter, as so many of you did, and I'd like to read just one small passage because it says so much. While we waited for the Rangers to evacuate our campus at, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, at Grand Anse, we experienced many chilling and sad moments. The most upsetting of these was the sight of an American helicopter being shot down by enemy fire. There were tears in everyone's eyes as we scanned the ocean water for the sight of any survivors. We knew then how much our lives meant to the brave men fighting for our safety. I wish I could tell you all the acts of heroism that I've been hearing. Sergeant Stephen Trujillo, a ranger, is one example. His unit was engaged in an air assault on the Calavina compound, which was held by Cuban forces. Sergeant Trujillo was in the first of four helicopters to go into the compound under intense enemy fire. Upon landing, Sergeant Trujillo saw the three other helicopters lose control and crash into one another. Immediately, and with complete disregard for his own personal safety, he ran across open terrain to the downed aircraft exposing himself to enemy fire, flying shrapnel, and possible explosion of the burning helicopters. With only the lives of his fallen comrades in mind, and while still in the open and exposed to intense automatic and small arms fire, Sergeant Trujillo began administering first aid to the critically wounded. Upon arrival of the battalion's physician's assistant, Sergeant Trujillo returned to the crashed aircraft several times, removing the wounded soldiers, carrying them across terrain to a safer location, and administering medical aid. During the entire time, he came under automatic and small arms fire. His unselfish actions were instrumental in saving the lives of a platoon leader and several other seriously wounded soldiers. And the inspiring thing is that Sergeant Trujillo, Trujillo would have risked his life for each of you as well. From your letters to me, I know how deep your gratitude, even affection, is for these men. Some of you have asked how you can express that respect and affection. Well, you've been doing a marvelous job already. Nothing could make those men prouder than the statements you've made to America about their bravery and devotion to a cause larger than themselves. A few years ago, it seemed that America forgot what an admirable and essential need there is for a nation to have men and women who would give their lives to protect their fellow citizens. What you saw 10 days ago was called patriotism. What those men did for you, they would do for any American in trouble. And the way you can best honor those who died in Grenada is to speak out about their courage and commitment as they risk their lives for yours and as so many of you have been doing already. Unbelievably, the other day, a reporter asked me what the di was the difference between our invading Grenada and the Soviets invading Afghanistan. The question sort of touched my temperature control. <laughs> I, I answered, and among the things I said was that there was no comparison between the savage invasion of Afghanistan with its slaughter of innocent men, women, and children, civilians, and the heroic rescue mission of our young Americans. Our troops are already leaving Grenada, but don't hold your breath waiting for the Soviets to leave Afghanistan. The Afghanistan...
The Afghanistan people aren't meeting the soldiers with friendly waves and gifts of flowers and fruit over there. A CBS News poll shows that an overwhelming majority of the Grenadians, 91 percent, are glad the United States came to Grenada. I think that tells a lot about the differences between democracy and totalitarianism. Now, I'm not going to take up all the time here, but it's good to have both students and servicemen together under more peaceful circumstances. And would you do me a favor? When you all leave today, would you try not to be as dramatic as it was in your last <laughs> leave taking? But thank you for coming. God bless all of you. And now I believe that Gene Joel and Jeff Geller want to say a few words. President and Mrs. Reagan, distinguished members of the military, fellow students, it is indeed a great honor to speak to you today. When I first spoke to the press and said that I wanted to thank President Reagan and the military, I never dreamed that I'd have a chance to do it personally. I am here today to say a few words on behalf of the student body of St. George's University School of Medicine. I think that I can speak not only on behalf of the students, but also on behalf of all the families of the students in expressing our gratitude to both you, Mr. President, and every member of the military that took part in our evacuation. We owe each and every one of you a debt that we can never repay. I can recall the joy and pride that I felt as the Rangers first emerged over the hill behind my dormitory. I looked out from my dormitory window, and upon hearing that they were Americans, I shouted in for joy and thought to myself, they haven't forgotten us, because we're Americans. I think that we are often so caught up in criticizing our government and our military that we lose sight of the admirable qualities that they possess. Two weeks ago, I saw those qualities in action. For the American military, I have only praise. They acted in a manner that all Americans can be proud of. Prior to this experience, I had held liberal political views, which were not always sympathetic with the position of the American military. I think a lot of us who don't have a first-hand view are often skeptical when we hear that our military is involved in a faraway place. We don't always understand why our soldiers are fighting abroad. Well, let me say that I have learned a lot from this experience. It is one thing to view an American military operation from afar, and quite another to be rescued by one. We are a group of young men and women dedicating to studying medicine so that we can save lives. Let us also remember that many lives were lost in saving ours. Let us honor those American men who saved their lives so that someday we can save others. To you, President Reagan, I must add a special thank you on behalf of my parents and of all the students' parents. Thank you for bringing us back to the United States. There is truly no place like home. Thank you. I'm very proud and honored to be here today. And I believe I represent not only my own class, but all of St. George's University School of Medicine. When I say that I am grateful to the U.S. military for their actions, I never had so much faith or pride in my country than during the 24 hours I spent under war conditions in Grenada. Probably the most poignant moment for me personally was Tuesday night in the library that we converted into a makeshift medical unit. I thought about the fact that just 24 hours earlier I had been studying here and how abrupt the change was from academics to reality. They brought in a soldier with three bullet wounds in his right arm and chest, and the man was in excruciating pain. While I attempted to assist the extremely self-sufficient thoracic surgeon as he inserted a chest catheter for drainage, I thought about this man on the table, I mean a total stranger to me, and yet an American who was willing to jeopardize his life not only for my personal safety, but for the causes of our country. These professional men, with their unspoken dedication to the United States and to our standards of freedom and democracy, have my great respect. My experience in Grenada, especially in the library medical unit, has reaffirmed my personal dedication to medicine 
and my commitment to complete my education. But it has also reaffirmed my faith and respect in the citizens of our country, especially those citizens in the military. As a representative of St. George's University School of Medicine, I would like to thank President Reagan and the military for their concern for our personal safety and to say that among such company, I am proud to be an American. President Reagan, the Honorable Military, and the student body, on behalf of the students of St. George's University School of Medicine, I would like to present you with this small token of our appreciation for saving our lives, the United States military, and you, President Reagan, in appreciation for your prompt action that guaranteed our safe return from Grenada, the students of St. George's University School of Medicine. I proudly accept that only as the acceptor in the realization that it goes, the men and women in uniform in our armed services. President Reagan, on behalf of the students, the very grateful students of St. George's University School of Medicine, who appreciate both your rescue mission in Grenada and your continued support for all citizens pursuing their American dream. We give you a plaque in the shape of the United States for bringing us home to America. We thank you.
Oops, excuse me. On these, I'm gonna send this to Dad. I think I'll take Secretary Weinberger. Is that you? Yeah. It's true. I have the piece of paper that Secretary Weinberger stood on. Thank you. 